What's up, y'all? Ryan the Corner Trucking here. Been a minute. Been two months behind on putting out videos. You know, I like to put them out once a month. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I've just been slacking on it. But this is my daily life right here when I don't have a load already scheduled. Amazon and the DAT load board, both of them up on my screens. I used to have three monitors, but as you can see, one blown out. So I'm back down to two. <clears throat> and the third one, I used to have a uh, like the individual brokers i used to use their uh get on their load boards on the third monitor when i looking for loads but this is my day this is owner operator looking for work in the local area this is how i do my day right here look like the screen kind of going in and out but that's the dat load board and you got amazon i focus there but the main thing i came here to talk about was do you guys know about what's this code 49 CFR 371.3. That's mainly for brokers, but you should know about it. Ooh, my hand all in the way. <laughs> you should know about it as an owner operator. So, because you know, we always talk about brokers be doing us wrong on pay. They be having a cheap freight out there and all that. But one way you can find out is if you work with a broker all the time, you think you're getting screwed over you might want to be able to negotiate with this broker again down the road is is look at the records for that load you took because brokers are required to keep information on that load of oh, not this that load but all those they they deal with they are required to do it from freight charges to what they pay the carrier all that so it's all required by federal government the F fms C A. Yeah, I think I'm saying that right. <laughs> I think I got all the letters right. So they're required to do that. So you should know that. It's one good thing as an owner operator to know is what brokers go through too and what they're required to do. And certain things like that is a good thing. It was just recently updated about brokers and them keeping their records on that law and you can look at it on the fsmc or you can just type it up on google and it'll tell you what it's about more it's like a 32 page pdf i'm not posting all that you're just gonna have to get yourself on there and read it <laughs> uh, it's best to train yourself on your own business stop letting people run your business especially brokers who are really not your friend they you might get a personal relationship with some those are the good ones, but when you just deal them daily day, they're not your friend. <laughs> they're not your friend. So, but look at it, read it, know what's going on on the broker side, and know for yourself so you can deal with it um, down the road if you ever want to know what a broker uh, broker's charge. Because like I've done a load, and the shipper actually showed me the load amount that they paid the broker. And then I figured out how much they were getting from me. And I basically came up on the short side. I kind of had a feeling because it seemed a little low. But I had a feeling how much more they were getting. And what brokers charge sometimes for fill surcharge is ridiculous. I don't even know why companies pay that, <laughs> to be honest. Because I know there ain't no truck that's paying, uh, requiring that much fill. But they get away with it. So if nobody's paying attention. They'll They'll just do it. That, you know, the federal government, they got so much that the federal government can do. You can't rely on the federal government to solve your problems. Uh, next thing is winter. Keep your truck ready. Get your fill uh, additive. If it's below freezing, keep your crappy diesel from gelling up so you can drive. I don't know whoever came up with this idea that diesel would be the better route over gasoline. But it freezes, starts getting foggy and cloudy. All that stuff when it gets to the freezing level. I'm using my phone instead of my camera because I don't know the software I'm using it, it won't make the screen for me to be bigger. Sometimes I use it when I um, trying to show something like on the screen. And I'll be like down there at the bottom. I wanted a more fuller view today, so I'm rambling now. But yeah, so the next thing is uh, medical. This is that time of the year. Get your taxes ready. Have all your expenses ready so you could 
write it off for the tax season and all that gas, all that. You need to start getting that ready. It's almost December. You know, it'd be a good idea to have it while you, uh, when you got days off just to get it organized, get it ready. But medical, you can write some of your medical off. Like uh, the DOT is requiring me to get the sleep acne test, which I did. And with my wife's insurance from her work, I still had to pay. I'm still paying probably out of pocket right now, probably close to $500 from the initial home test to getting the equipment. Then there's a monthly fee. For the sleep acne device, I'm assuming for filters, holes, replacements, monthly. I'm assuming that's what the monthly fee is for. I haven't gotten it yet because I, I'm still going through the process. I made the appointment and I'm just waiting to go on the appointment to go pick up the equipment. And they said it takes roughly about an hour. It might be an hour, it might not be. But uh, that's just, you know, that's something you can write off. Is your medical expense, especially something the DLT is requiring you to do, like me to do the sleep acne. They're requiring me to do this for my medical certificate because right now I've been on medical uh, certificate every three months for basically two months, you know, for six months now till I got the sleep acne study done and get the equipment. And there's a requirement of you got to be on it for, I think, a month. And it's got to show the results that basically it's helping and all that. So I don't know what that would, how that would affect me going if I went OTR. Right now, it's exclusively lo local where I'm um, basically, I say the farthest is maybe 180 miles. I go to Portland, Trosdale. That's my inner, you know, over the state that, but going like the Blaine, that's about 140. I haven't been to Spokane in a while. This, Lowe's just ain't worth the money to be going over the mountain to go to Spokane. That just don't make any sense. Some of these Lowe's that are out here in Washington right now. I live in Washington, if you didn't know. Washington State, not D.C., Washington State. And it's just, it's just crappy. The pay is crappy. And, uh... Oh, I said recently add. I was trying to see if there was any last minute low. So I went today and got my oil change. Got my oil change, filled up my tank, had to fill up my def. So all the day, just today, I spent seven hundred and four dollars between all three of that oil change. I get the full synthetic oil change, so it costs a little bit more. But I you know, the between the five W forty range, full synthetic. That's probably your best oil to use, even in a box truck, even heavy duty, really. That's the best oil to use because you got that temperature range. Five W's like negative something. <clears throat> I can't remember what it is, but it's negative something. Temperature wise, Fahrenheit, and then 40 is the higher range temperature wise, Fahrenheit. You know, some people say you should use 1540. I totally disagree with that. Maybe in the summertime, use 1540. It might be good for you, but uh, the uh, 5W40 is the best range because it's got a very low, low cold range and a high hot range, temperature wise. And this is outside air temperature to be talking about, not not your truck engines, the outside air. So you need to know that when you get your oil changed. So I recommend just get the full synthetic 5W40. That way you ain't got to worry about temperature because to get that cold <clears throat> to make oil be a pain in the butt, you probably got to be like at the North Pole, <laughs> to be honest. The North Pole, uh, the same with the 40W. You got to be in Arizona, <clears throat> and it's probably got to be like 140, 150 degrees outside, whatever that temperature range is for it to show up. Oh, the monitors went black, been letting it sit for too long. So I ain't going to take too long because I am trying to look and see if I can find a quick load today for this afternoon because it's 1.30 now. I seriously doubt there'll be one here in Washington that's local at this time, but you never know. I've gotten lucky a couple times. I'm still holding my phone. I don't have one of those sticks. I'm doing it all by, by arm. My arm is getting tired. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna try to get more episodes out. I know I say that all the time. I I still want to be doing once a month, but I haven't. I just haven't been doing. It. Just been trying to stay busy. Most of the time, I'll be sitting here. If I don't have a load, I'm, I'm doing this and staring at the monitors, looking for loads that are local. So and doing my other personal stuff. But yeah, look up that law. Know about it. So it'll work in your favor as an owner operator on a box truck, 53 footers, even 53 footers. But know that. So if you ever have a problem, you can always pull the record and see if you're getting the best deal working with that broker. Um, that's about it. You guys have a good, happy holiday. Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. Happy holiday. Catch you on the next one. Some kind of butterfly